You want to stop taking notes. So what do you do instead of taking notes? Instead of taking notes, you want to lab, 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 lab. Huh. How to avoid failing the CCNA. This video is going to address a lot of the common mistakes that I see people make when studying for the CCNA. Um, people tend to study for this exam using traditional methods and traditional mistakes. The traditional methods are taking notes, cramming, um, not giving themselves enough time. I, would, I don't wanna say taking notes is detrimental or, or, or a mistake per se, but I would say that it'll definitely hinder you from getting through this behemoth of, <laughs> of material that you need to master for the CCNA exam, right? There's a lot of material in this particular version of the exam because it's one exam. It used to be two different exams. And I think that gave people enough uh, time and room to master the material. Now it's just one exam and you need to master all of this material and you need to take this exam and it's one exam. And I think that a lot of people are failing it because they're using traditional methods. I don't think the traditional methods are gonna work, right? I've earned my CCNA a month ago at the time of the recording of this video. I earned it May 3rd, 2022. And I used some fairly uh, unorthodox methods. One of which was I didn't take any notes, but I'm gonna get into that at a later segment of this video. Number one, give yourself enough time to study for the exam. Give yourself anywhere between six to eight months to study for this exam. Now, I don't see what the rush is. People are rushing to take this exam. They're trying to fly through the material and it's simply not going to work. You have to dedicate and commit yourself to learning this material. And I say learning this material, not studying it, not memorizing it, learning the material. You might as well learn the material and get it out the way rather than memorizing everything, taking the exam, passing it, and then having to come back to study the material all over again. I say that from experience. I haven't really gone over much of my CCNA material, the little notes that I did take, but I still remember a large portion of the material because I spent a lot of time learning the material and I gave myself enough time to study for the exam. So I gave myself a year to study for the exam and I was consistently studying for the exam maybe six to eight months, right, consistently. The first, I guess, six months I was more so you know, dilly-dallying, dancing around it, you know, reading it here and there, reading some of the material here and there, uh, labbing here and there, but I didn't really settle in to start actually studying for the exam until last, I would say, September. That's when I started really making a lot of headway with the material. There's three resources that you need, you absolutely need in order to pass the exam. Official Cert Guide by Wendell Odom, Jeremy's IT Lab CCNA course. It's free here on YouTube. You can purchase it on Teachable if you want. It comes with some bonus questions, bonus quiz questions. It's a really good resource. Jeremy really leaves no stone unturned. He really goes in depth with a lot of the material to the point where sometimes I was annoyed because I was just like, dang, do I really have to really know how to convert hexadecimal to decimal and all that stuff. And I don't know, I was being lazy at those points because I just was in love with the higher order concepts and boson XM. Bosons XM practice exams are, you, you need that. If you don't use boson, then I don't know what you're doing because his exams are hard. So it gives you enough batting practice with difficult questions that when you take the actual exam, your stress tolerance is gonna to be up there. You'll be able to handle the stress of the real questions of the exam. A good portion of the value that comes from Boson XM is in the explanation. You'll know why the right answer is right and why the wrong answer is wrong. If you don't study the material, you can't really tell which answer is the correct answer and which one isn't just by looking at it. When you take some exams, you can tell right off the bat when you look at some answers, you'll know, okay, 
that's the wrong answer. That's the wrong answer. Oh, that might be the right answer. No, on the Boson XM, you have to know exactly why each answer is correct and why each incorrect answer is incorrect. And that provides tremendous value for your preparation. So make sure you get those three materials. Give yourself six to eight months to study and stop trying to cram. Cramming is never going to help you at all. It's just going to frustrate you. You're going to burn your synapses out and you're going to want to give up. Number two, stop taking these insane amount of breaks. Stop taking these insanely long breaks. I know people who take a break every other day. They study when they feel like it. And I know some people who take these long drawn out two week to four week long breaks. That's not going to help you because again, this is one exam with concepts that build on top of each other. And if you study for maybe two, three weeks straight, you get into a momentum and the, the topics are they're building on each other nicely, which is what the OCG does a great job with doing. And then you suddenly stop, you're gonna lose momentum and then you're gonna come back to the material and then you're gonna be like, oh wait, where was I? Use the momentum that you gain from staying committed to studying for this exam, from the discipline and the structure that you have and just just do it. A plus, a lot of the concepts don't necessarily build on one another. With networking, you're literally networking. Like everything is connected and everything plays off of each other. The benefit of using that long window is that you get to add in supplementary materials as you go along, right? So say for instance, you're learning about IPv6 and the OCG and it doesn't cover the material adequately enough for you. You can afford to take the time to buy a separate book or a separate resource that'll help you nail the topic of IPv6, which is what I did. I purchased this book right here for IPv6 and it did wonders for me. It made me actually fall in love with IPv6. Give yourself six to eight months to study if that's adequate enough for you. I know some of you might be on a time constraint where you might need some time. You might need, um, <laughs> you might have to pass the exam within one or two months or something like that for your job or something along those lines. Um, and number two, stop taking these long drawn out breaks. Make sure you stay committed spoon feed the material over the course of six to eight um, months and be consistent and you won't really need to take those breaks you can pace yourself adequately enough so that those long drawn out breaks are aren't needed it, it kind of reminds me of this saying um oh you want to create a life where you have a career where you never need to take a vacation right you notice people who work so hard doing things that they hate and they always look forward to the weekends and they always look forward to these long vacations. I kind of I kind of relate it to that. I kind of think of that when I think about pacing yourself when taking this exam and anything in life, right? When you pace yourself, you don't necessarily need to take long breaks because you're living a life that is intentionally utilizing your energy in an efficient way. Number three, stop taking notes. I know that sounds crazy. Every time I say that, it sounds crazy to people, but stop taking notes, especially for this exam. And this is not to say don't take notes when you're learning on the job. This is stop taking notes when you are studying, when you're learning something. I'm going to tell you why. You're short circuiting the encoding process. Now, that's a fancy name that um, that's that's in the neuroscience community when it comes to learning. Right. I learned that from Dr. Justin Sung. He has a learning channel here on YouTube. And it's a it, it was an eye opener when I realized that the way that I was learning was ideal for learning period, right? When I was in college, I thoroughly enjoyed what I was learning because, you know, I was very interested in it, right? And that translated into me retaining the information for longer periods of time for getting higher grades and and I wasn't taking any notes I was engaging in the learning event that was the lecture when it came time to take the exams I just had to do a little bit of review a little bit of brushing up I didn't have to actually 
study too long. And when the exam came, I was acing these exams, right? It was particularly for like calculus, physics. Um, at one point I took biology, anatomy and physiology and stuff like that. You wanna stop taking notes. So what do you do instead of taking notes? Instead of taking notes, you want to lab. Lab, 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 lab. <laughs> like uh, Dewan Lightfoot um, says, lab every day. You want to lab every single day. When you lab, you're able to really connect the concepts in real time. You connect the concepts to theory and you're doing that in real time and you retain this information for a longer period of time. That, that's, that's what you wanna do with the CCNA, especially because this is IT. Because this is IT, you wanna have a practical understanding of how to actually do things. This is not like a degree program where you go and you, you, you study for the, 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 the exams and then you get your grade and then you move on. You, you don't do that here. Here, you studying for six to eight months and you're passing one exam. You're taking and passing one exam. That's what you wanna be doing, right? Let's go over these three points. Give yourself enough time to study, more than enough time six to eight months, right? And I'll even add in that you should schedule the exam, right? If you if you give yourself six months, schedule your exam six months out. Eight months, schedule your exam eight months out. Number two, stop taking all of these crazy breaks. That is related to and it ties into giving yourself more than enough time to take the exam and scheduling the exam at an appropriate time, right? Number three, stop taking notes. Instead, lab every day you want to be hands-on with it that'll ultimately benefit you in the long term when you actually get into the field you'll be able to just you know jump into it quickly and allow for yourself to um i guess assimilate to that environment right and this is not to say don't take uh any notes while you're on the job learning and stuff like that no this is stop taking notes during the learning event the last point i'm going to mention Focus on the higher level concepts first. Don't get bogged down with all of the details such as the, uh, the protocols, the acronyms and things of that nature. There's some people out there that's gonna tell you, make sure you learn the protocols. And you need to learn the context with which those protocols are relevant. When you learn the context, it's very easy for you to think of a tool that'll help you to enact that concept. When you wanna resolve layer two to layer three, how would you, how would you do that, right? Because we know that switches only behave on the layer two level, right? They don't know anything about IP addresses, at least uh, layer two switches. They don't know anything about uh, IP addresses. They don't use IP address. What, so what are you gonna use to resolve layer two addresses with layer three addresses, you're gonna use ARP, right? And the higher level concept of that is the life of a packet, right? When a packet or a frame is traversing a network, you're going to need both layer two and layer three addressing to get that piece of information from one end of the network to the other end of the network. And it's easy for me to remember that because of the higher level concept of the purpose of a network. The first thing you're gonna learn in the CCNA, besides you know the OC and the TCP IP model, is what is a network? What's the purpose of a network, right? The purpose of a network, essentially at the most basic level, is to move data from one end of the network to the other end of the network, to some other device, right? And also, you could break it down even further than that, but we're not even gonna we're not even gonna do that. Getting the higher order um, concepts in mind first will help you to fill in the, the the holes where the protocols are concerned. Right? You'll know where if you know what the purpose of a network is. You know why DHCP is important, why ARP is important, why OSPF is important, why EIGRP is important why um you know the dns is important like you you all of these things would just fill itself in that's what i'm saying give yourself enough time to study because you want all of these concepts to be made clear in your mind and you might even want to start using certain analogies i like to use 
um, the highway analogy or a post office analogy when I'm thinking about routing and switching and the way that package traverse the network and things of that nature. I like to use the sandwich or the pizza pie analogy when thinking about when thinking about subnetting, right? Um, there's so many there's so many analogies and metaphors that you can use to gain understanding of the higher level concepts, right? So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I really, really, really want to emphasize this though. Make sure you're giving yourself enough time to study. This is not a race. Learn the material, get good at the craft, um, teach other people, take your time to give back. It'll, it'll all make sense when you finally pass the exam and you're like, dang, like what was I in a, cause let me tell you something, I passed the exam, now I'm like, huh now what like what was i rushing for like I, I to be honest i was rushing i was in a i was in a rush too and i was just like man i want to get this exam out the way there's multiple setbacks that happened and now i'm like wow i have all this time on my hand of course i'm looking for job opportunities i've been interviewing like crazy i'm making content um I, i'm starting to study for the ccmp but there really is no rush unless you have a job opportunity literally lined up for you after you pass and that's a different story right for the people who are still kind of like thrown by me saying stop taking notes right here's what you can do and i covered this in another video i would say journal what you're learning rather than taking notes on it and how would you journal what you're learning take a stream of consciousness approach which is basically how i'm doing this video i'm doing this video in a very stream of consciousness i don't have a script i'm just speaking off the top of my head you want to do the same thing when it comes to journaling and taking notes for the things that you of the things that you learned throughout your your studies right for example two weeks or one week before i took the exam um, I was having some issues with crystallizing the process of how a router makes routing decisions. So I decided to read some Cisco documentation two times and ask myself, okay, what is this trying to tell me about the routing process, about how a router, Cisco router makes routing decisions, right? And then I answered it out loud in stream of consciousness. Then I got a little black notebook and then I started just, just writing the whole routing process from start to finish. Like what happens when a router initially gets a packet, right? And then and then what happens to that packet? The de-encapsulation and the, 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 the what, which IP address it looks at and then what it does with that IP address right? How the routing table is built. So many different things go into the whole routing process. And I just wrote it all out in stream of consciousness. That's ideally what you want to do when you're at the last phase of study so that you kind of crystallize and solidify all of the concepts to the point where it just rolls off your tongue, right? To, to, to the point where you start dreaming about these concepts. It's like second nature to you, right? That's pretty much it. Um, I wish I can go more in depth. I don't know. I just want you guys to stop rushing. Stop. There's people I know that's like giving themselves two months to study for the exam. Two months is not a very long time. It's not. It's especially if you have a job, especially if you have kids. It's not a very long time. Two months is only eight weeks. It, that's nothing when it comes to studying. It's That's nothing, you know? Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, if you want more study tips and vlogs like this, click right here and I'll talk to you guys next time.